you going to fix them? Yeah. Okay. No, this is the <laughs> so are we going to be using this one, but it can be down here, or we're not going to be using it? You're going to, you're going to connect it all to this one. Good. Could someone get me some water? <laughs> no left. Oh. Okay. as long as it works. 
In any case, if it's the microphone, it could be some other part of the system. Uh, <clears throat> it's, and like any colonial system, it keeps the colonized people divided and helpless. They're divided because they're forbidden to redistribute the program, and they're helpless because they don't have the source code, so they can't change it. They can't even study it to find out what it really does to them. So a non-free program frequently has malicious features, which the users often can't find out about. And even if they do find out, they can't get rid of them. But a free program respects freedom and community. That's very general. Let me be more specific. A program that you have a copy of is free software for you if that copy comes with the four essential freedoms. Freedom is the freedom to run the program as you Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code and change it so that it does your computing as you wish. Freedom two is the freedom to help others. That's the freedom to redistribute exact copies to others when you wish. And freedom three is the freedom to contribute to your community. That's the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions when you wish. So, if the program comes with these four freedoms, then it's free software because the social system of its distribution and use is an ethical system, one that respects freedom and community. But, if one of these freedoms is missing or insufficient, then the program is proprietary software because it imposes an unethical social system on its users. You can also receive the program and run it without looking at it. With Freedom 2, you can redistribute copies when you wish, but it's not compulsory. We never say, you must distribute a copy to him. The point is, you must not be forbidden to distribute a copy to him if you choose. Mm -hmm. And with Freedom 3, if you have made a modified version, you can distribute copies of that. But we don't say you must publish your modified versions. You can make a modified version and use it privately. So, the distinction between free and proprietary software is not a technical distinction. It is an ethical, social, and political distinction, which is why it's so important. The technical issues we can leave to technicians involved in any particular project but ethical issues directly affect every user. The use of a free program in society is development. Because a program embodies knowledge, and in the case of free software, that knowledge is available for the users to understand, then to maintain, adapt, and extend, and also to apply in other ways. However, the use in society of a proprietary program is not development because it's dependence. So it's a social problem and we should aim to eliminate that problem, eliminate the use of a proprietary program. To write a free program is a con contribution to society. How much of a contribution, that depends on all the details. But at least it's released to society in a way that permits it to contribute whatever it has to offer. However, to, to develop a proprietary program is no contribution because it's a power grab. It's an attempt to subjugate other people. In social terms, this proprietary program functions as a trap. If it has attractive features, those are the bait. Their purpose is to attract people into the program so that they lose their freedom. 
So, in a paradoxical way, they don't make it better, they make it more harmful. Therefore, if you have a choice to develop a proprietary program or do nothing at all, it's better to do nothing at all, because this way at least you don't do harm. In real life, you probably have other choices that might be better than both of these, but if it's a choice between these two, don't write proprietary software, do nothing. So, the objective of the free software movement is that all programs be free so that all their users can be free. But what makes these four freedoms essential? Why define free software this way? Each freedom has a reason. Freedom two, the freedom to redistribute exact copies to help others is essential on fundamental moral grounds so you can live an upright ethical life as a good member of your <coughs> community. If you use a program that denies freedom too, then you are in danger of falling into a moral dilemma at any moment whenever your good friend says, that program looks convenient, can I have a copy? In that moment, you will face a choice between two evils. One evil is to give your good friend a copy and violate the license of the program. The other evil is to refuse your good friend a copy and comply <coughs> with the license of the program.